All right, you saw on the time lapse, I was blowing it up. This is my inflatable booth. It's right here. So Ocean and I are gonna go through and clean up the whole thing. We do a full microfiber wipe down from top to bottom on it, and then we mop the floors before we get out of here. So as you see, there's a nice shade of Fjord Blue, mixed in with some quicksand. This is the quicksand bus and the Fjord Blue 59 are the only ones I've painted in here. The other two cars I did open air, like basically just shooting outside in the shop, which proved to be difficult. That's why I ended up getting this. So this is not like your typical $400 eBay booth. This is a much higher quality. This is made in America. The company Mobile Environment Solutions really puts a lot of effort into this booth. It's really nice. Give you a quick little look around here. So it's OSHA approved, all that good stuff right there. So their shop is in Texas. Yep, Montgomery, Texas. If you want to look them up. So this is like a protective for your door. Okay, so your door is actually what has the filters and there you really see the Fjord blue. So their, their doors take paint pockets and they charge an exorbitant amount of money for those. So what I did is I bought a roll of paint pockets, the same stuff they use in like real booths, like brick and mortar booths. And I make my own. I buy the Velcro off of Amazon and I just, I literally glue and staple them together. I know that sounds hokey, but there are like 250 bucks for those two filters and you'll get a priming session out of them and then the base and clear session out of them. So it's just not worth it. I'd be spending way too much on filters. So for $200, I get like 12 sets of them or something like that when I make them myself. The only bummer about that is they do require time and effort, but they have this really nice cover for this. So as you're bringing things out, especially if you like how we have them on racks or even if you're pulling a car in here, you're not ruining your front door because that door zips up right here. It zips up right there, your filters are there. But the fans outside here, we've got this back man door. That's another cool thing about this, all right? So let's see, emergency exit, emergency exit pull here, emergency exit pull here. And you're like, why would you need an emergency exit in an inflatable paint booth? What could hurt you? The fumes, you're like you're shooting flammable materials. You could start a fire in there. So that's why, if you notice, my lighting is on the exterior. You know, we don't have we don't have lighting on the inside because if it sparks while you're shooting, you're gonna explode, you're gonna die. So my buddy Tom Ciesco made me these registers. I just put a cheaper, like a, he made them for 2020 AC registers that I could just put in there, drop in. So like when we do a fresh paint job, it gets a set of fresh filters. It'll get to a point where these start getting discolored by our whatever color we're spraying. So we'll put new ones in on them. It's cheap, it's economical and it's repeatable. So I've seen a lot of inflatable booths that really suck. And this isn't any shining piece of amazing work right here, but it's very well made, much nicer than like what you're gonna see for like those $400 booths I see on Timu and all that crap. Just the material it's made of. This is a PVC, super strong. Um, it's, it's repairable. So I like it, it's done me well. And what it provides me, like, Doing completes in here sucks. It overwhelms the booth. It cannot move that volume of air. But when I'm doing things like my doors right there, is they'll be done in the booth. So inside the booth, it's a little more controlled. You know, this thing actually does have the paint pocket to filter the air. And also it provides me, once we do our due diligence of cleaning this area, it provides me with a nice clean area to paint these products in. When I do these inside the booth, I have less risk of contamination. Dirt particles falling on them, and that's not to say it doesn't happen because their design is somewhat flawed on this. They have the, uh, the air coming in from above on those up there. And as you can see, like even they collect dirt around them. So really what good are they? Because what happens is you'll have your, like I've had in the past doors laying down. We're all guilty of like, really laying it onto a door when it's down because there's less chance of it running and you really want to freaking nail that shine. And then you get these beautiful things above head that just seem to go doosh and they rain on your parade there, literally, figuratively, everything there. They ruin all that hard work you did just by something falling in. There, it's less likely to happen inside of here because we can control this environment, but it's not to say it doesn't happen. 
I've heard from multiple people, like even in great booths, like really nice booths, you get dirt and trash in your paint. It's severely lowered the, the chance that it happen if you are meticulous about the maintenance on your boots. Filters are super clean, the booth itself is really clean, you know, but it still can happen. And what I hear that it's mostly people who work in production shops. Here, we're a little more caveman, a little more guerrilla style. We do the best we can to keep things clean. Yeah, so we're getting the booth set up. We're gonna get it all cleaned up. We're gonna mop this floor. I'm gonna pull the filters off the door. I gotta make a new set of filters for it. These are the filters I was talking about. These are called paint pockets. They're, like I said, spray booth filters. So Mobile Environment Solutions on crack, dude. They literally want 200 something dollars for a set of those filters and they don't last long enough for that. So I buy them in bulk. And all I do, like they're already, they already have the hook and loop set up on them. Velcro, if you will. So all I do is I super 90 the hook side to my paint pocket there and I make my own. So if anybody's got a mobile environmental solution, doesn't want to pay those stupid costs on their filters, there's a solution right there. So they collect a lot of dirt and dust. So before we even do our wipe down, I'm getting rid of them. We're going to make sure we wipe down the whole door inside outside and we do wipe the booth down inside outside because when you deflate this thing, the roof touches the floor and that's a big problem because you've just contaminated your work area, especially if I was spraying the night before and I sh just shut it down, you know, and there's overspray all over the roof. And when you fire it up in the morning and it inflates, it's an absolute train wreck. So this is, this booth helps by giving us a clean space, but it is a job. It is so much preparation to get it going, as opposed to if we had a like a, a brick and mortar booth, you just pull into it. But that's a whole other can of worms and that's for a paint and body shop. We're not a paint and body shop. So we're gonna get these filters off of here. The Ocean and I are gonna go through and we're gonna systematically, we're gonna split the booth in half and wipe everything down. Top, bottom, roofs, everything. Get it nice and spick and span in there ready for some spraying. In that time lapse you saw, we went through this entire thing, top to bottom. Everything in here has been wiped down. Even these, after I did the top, we went back and went did some vacuum and whatnot. We've swept the floor one more time. Now we're gonna run the mop in here. 
like I said, so much freaking work just to even shoot something in here. It's insane. But we're going to run the mop, and then i got to make some filters. But Ocean and I got the booth cleaned up top to bottom. We literally actually washed the top of the booth as well, just to make sure no issues. We will spray these panels here next week. I'm going to put them into a urethane sealer first. And then from the urethane sealer, I let it cure, and then I'm going to just block it with a uh, 500 real quick, dry, and then we're going to be doing the basing clear on those. I'm going, I've already aligned all my panels. They've all been on the vehicle, and I make sure that my belt line and all the cording seams, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So like this bottom right here lines up with the door bottom, so on and so forth. All my cargo doors do the same. You know, we made, we took the time to line them all up. So when I install it, if I paint them off the car, so long as I keep my cut line to the bottom of that belt line where it's supposed to be factory, everything should line up wonderfully. So we'll get that stuff cracking next week and that's going to, that's going to start the process of painting that exterior because I paint all my panels off of it, meaning my doors, deck lid, rear hatch, all that stuff gets painted off of it. I got the rest of that stuff over here. So all this stuff has basically been sprayed into an epoxy and then I still have to do a, just a quick block on it. I just do a minimal block on it and then I put the urethane on top of that just to give it some bite. So we got apron, deck lid, rear hatch, two top hinges there. I got our parcel tray and the rear cap for the drink tray for the back seat, front seat, back of the front seat. Yeah, so we got a ton of work still to do on this thing. Let me give you guys a quick look. So we do have the undercarriage painted the Titian red and our interior sprayed in the beige gray. So this is new from the last time you guys saw it. Stoked on how it came out. She's looking good. We're going to get to spraying. So everything on this bus has been basically sprayed for a year and a half, two years. It's been way too long. Just way, way too long. And we're trying to correct that. But the one good thing is, like I found a failure here. Around the curvature of that louver, the material was separating, so I went and took it down to bare metal, so we're gonna hit that with some fresh epoxy. Some of this stuff wasn't put into epoxy. The previous body guy I had didn't feel it necessary. He didn't put epoxy down first. He always did his metal or his mud work directly on bare metal. And I know a lot of people do it that way, so it's not a wrong way. There's just different processes of doing it, and he chose that as his route. So, as we see these little failures, we go through, we do a corrective work. I wanna hand the Thorns the absolute best product when we're done with it. It needs to be not only look beautiful, I need it to last. I don't ever want someone to have to re-restore something that we did. So we take the do, we take the time to do things like, you know, a lot of people wouldn't do this, but I got all the insides and everything in my doors epoxied and they will get painted. So all this stuff here, that's all in epoxy, you know, and this is all gonna get painted as well. Most of what you see in that interior is going to get covered by upholstery, you know, even down to all this stuff. All this is going to get upholstered. You got a rubber floor mat cover in this. We got headliner cover in all this area. But why did I paint it? If it's going to be covered in headliner, you know, a lot of people go, oh, it's a waste of time. Agreed, it may be a waste of time in your book, but for me, it's all about the details. When someone tears this car apart, it's going to look factory fresh. And I know the factory didn't even do anything in the doors because they were just barely brushed on the, the foggiest coat you could see in there. But we're doing these cars better than factory. So if that's the case, do it accordingly. Put the extra material in the doors. Get that stuff sealed off because that's where your cancer starts on these cars. Let's go look at an example. I got a freaking same guy dropped off that rotisserie, cleared out his garage, dropped off all his bus sheet metal. Well, let's just look at where these doors start rotting. You know, so a bus door, it doesn't have a window that goes up and down, but water still intrudes into it. And now look at that. These things are all rotted from the inside out. Every one of them. There's no exception to these doors. They're all junk. Every one of them. So if we're going to do the work on them, we do it right. You do that extra effort that they didn't take at the factory because nobody knew these cars would be around for 50, 60, 70 years. They figured all these things would have been in a freaking junkyard decades ago. So we want to make sure that when we do a job, that there's quality in that job. You have to give them your best product possible. 
So that's what we're trying to do here. You guys are gonna go along on some of this journey with me. I may do some time lapses of actual spraying and stuff like that, but I find every time I turn this camera on when I'm working, something seems to go awry. We may not do that. I may just show you before and after results on them. This video, that's all about my spray booth. Let's talk about the spray booth real quick. What I pay for it? Retail on this booth here is $10,000, which is nutso. My buddy Shannon Akai, you guys may know him from uh, Counts Customs, he displayed his bus every year for these guys, Mobile Environmental Solutions. And so I got a deal on this booth. So I still paid dearly. I paid $6,000 for this booth, which in my opinion was far too much. After the first time using it, I realized how much it didn't actually clean the air. Uh, it wasn't actually moving enough air. Yeah, I felt a little bummed on that. I had to make payments on that thing too, which really just chapped my hide every time I made one and I knew my booth wasn't that great and I would have been better off getting a used booth from somewhere and erecting the thing, you know? But it gives me a clean space to work out of. The quality in the air is not there. What I expected, what I wanted is not there. So that's a bummer for sure. But all in all, I get a clean space to spray. I have a reusable area that I can keep as clean or as dirty as I want to. Would I have done it again? Not at all, not a chance. I would never spend that kind of money on an inflatable booth, it's insane. This is much higher quality than the ones that you see on like Timu and, and Amazon and all those $400, $1,000 booths that pop up now. This is way different. This Velcro is all together in areas, the panels are replaceable, the PVC outer liner is repairable if you get a slice in it. That floor section is like a stiff canvas with a rubber coating on it. It's a much higher quality booth than the crap you're seeing on Amazon. But in hindsight, I wouldn't have done it again. But thanks for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate it. We keep climbing in subscribers, climbing in views, and it's all because of you guys that watch my videos and share them with your friends and talk about them and all that stuff. It's always greatly appreciated. Let's not forget, October 3rd through the 5th in Las Vegas, Nevada, one crazy weekend. Brought to you by Let's Talk Dubs Podcast, the wagon and the Las Vegas Volkswagen Club. There's gonna be Friday meet and greet with a strip cruise involved on that one. Saturday daytime car show with a top 20 Buddy Hale's debut choice and Spike's choice. Spike, Andy Finch, go follow him. Andy the Paint, I'm sure he's got way more followers than I got, so you probably already do. All right, we got all kinds of cool stuff happening with the world famous Let's Talk Dubs Poker Run. Brought to you by Let's Talk Dubs. Yeah, we're stopping the poker run just so you know, and it's always good times. This year at the Poker Run, I'm gonna have my boy from IBB Barbecue, my boy Blaine, it's Ocean's father actually. He's gonna be barbecuing. We're gonna have pulled pork sandwiches and bratwurst here when you stop by, because I know when we do the Poker Run, it's usually about dinner time for some people. So now you get a nice little snack. We'll have some sodas, we'll have some waters, all that good stuff. You come in, you get your card, head on to the next spot. And we're gonna have like little pulled pork sandwiches. You can take them on the road with you and the brats. Also, if you made it this far in the video, this is the Easter egg of them all. Sunday morning. We have nothing planned for Sunday. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm into big BMX bikes, big rippers, all that stuff like that. The, the new 29 inch hutches, all that stuff, which is gangsters all get out. But I'm into them. I got a lot of friends into them. And we figured, you know, we got all these people coming from out of state. Let's set up a bike ride. So 9 a.m. Get your big BMX out. 9 a.m. Sunday. That's going to be October 6th. We're gonna be doing a bike ride. We're leaving from the wagon. We're gonna do a cruise around downtown. It's gonna be good times. I don't care if you got a 29 inch BMX, you got a beach cruiser. If you got a bike and you wanna do that ride, 9 a.m. at the wagon. You'll know where it's at because you did the poker run. If you didn't do the poker run, you don't know where we're at. That's all right. I appreciate everybody for watching. Do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications if you're feeling froggy. That way you know every time I do it because I don't get one out every week. I certainly try, but I don't get one out every week. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. George T. from The Wagon signing off.